what's up guys welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome 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 thank you guys so much for clicking on today's video i know this is something different i have never posted a video of making vegan meals but i wanted to share with you guys one of the meals that i prepared earlier in the year for one of my relatives it was for my uncle um, i actually made this meal for easter sunday all right so let's get into the main dish probably the reason why y'all clicked on this video the vegan meatloaf now y'all this is not my personal recipe um i did find this recipe so i'll make sure i link it down below um i did make a few tweaks as far as the seasonings go but it's not my personal recipe so first you want to start off chopping up your veggies pretty much your onions and your carrots um and your celery uh, if I'm not mistaken, I didn't chop up celery on camera because I had some frozen celery. I think, I'm not sure, but I did put celery in it. I think what I had was frozen celery. I think you'll see it right here. It'll be uh, frozen onions and celery I already pre-chopped. So you just want to cook the veggies until they get nice and soft and the onions get that nice translucent look. So while the veggies are cooking down you want to get your two cans of chickpeas and drain the juice off of them um, and then you want to start to mash them um, this takes a little bit of time but uh, you want to mash them until you get uh, a good consistency on the chickpeas a little challenge I see I had to start using two hands because my hands started getting tired but you want to keep mashing this is not where you want to be stopped so that is a consistency that you want to see um, and then you want to go ahead and add your veggies into that mix so pretty much the chickpeas is like your meat so you want to give it that texture or that look if you look at it it kind of does look like ground beef at least it does to me Now here is where you can kind of tweak the recipe like I did. Um, I added my basic seasons that I add um, to most of my dishes. So things like garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper. Um, I think I did uh, all purpose seasoning. So this is the part where you can kind of make it your own, you know, season it the way you like your food season. So that's what I did here. Alright, so you got to make your loaf um, like the traditional way by adding bread or breadcrumbs. So this recipe calls for the breadcrumbs. So I just uh, used my measuring cup now. I did one cup of the plain breadcrumbs. The following, the rest of the ingredients that I use, I made sure to measure because these are, you know, the main ingredients for the recipe. So you want to make sure you follow those uh, according to the recipe. And then I'm going to add uh, about three tablespoons of the nutritional yeast.
so y'all can see the rest of the stuff that I'm adding I'm not gonna go down the list just just watch the video y'all <laughs> Y'all, as I was making this recipe, I'm going to be honest, this stuff started smelling pretty good. Um, I didn't taste anything as I prepared it. Um, I just cooked it. <laughs> but it actually did smell pretty good as I was, you know, mixing everything together. The different uh, ingredients start to combine and it just really start to smell good to me. Ooh, child, if I have to do this voiceover one more time. All right. Y'all, I'm going to get it this time. All right. So, <laughs> once everything is mixed well and seasoned well, I added some, or I sprayed some olive oil to my loaf pan. And then I put about half of the mixture into the loaf pan. And I patted it down just to make sure it was um, even all throughout the pan because you want to make sure you get an even an even layer um, in the pan because if you don't it may not cook well so just make sure everything is nice and even inside the little pan So once you get it down packed into the loaf pan, just cover it with some foil and you want to let it, let it cook for about 30 minutes uh, covered. And then while the loaf is cooking, I'm just going to make the sauce, which is pretty much ketchup and Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So this is what it looks like after the first 30 minutes. I had to give it a smell, y'all, because like I told y'all, it was actually starting to smell pretty good. So I just took the sauce that I made and I started brushing it um, all over the top. I made sure it was evenly coated, so that's why I used the brush. And I just brushed it all the way on until I got to the end of the sauce. So once I added all the sauce to the top of the loaf, 
I just put it back into the oven uncovered for about 15 minutes. All right, so for the last dish, the vegan mac and cheese. I actually enjoy making this. So I am starting off with adding salt to my pasta water. Make sure you add plenty of salt to your pasta water. That's whether it's vegan or non-vegan. And this y'all right here is a game changer. I love um, this better than bouillon brand. Right here I'm using the vegetable uh, flavor. Normally I would do chicken, but since this is a vegan, we're gonna do it with the vegetable blend. And it just makes the pasta taste so, so much better, y'all. I'm telling y'all, either use chicken stock or use that better than bouillon and you will see a difference in your uh in your mac and cheese okay now uh what you just saw me doing was peeling the potato and then i'm shredding the potato as well and i believe uh this is a main ingredient for the mac and cheese because it helps get the mac and cheese nice and creamy and cheesy so i was definitely definitely shocked that this was one of the recipes or one of the ingredients for this recipe and so next you just want to uh, cook the potatoes with some garlic that's what I just added cook the potatoes down with some garlic and then you're going to um, add your seasoning to this potato the potatoes and garlic Also, one thing I want to mention is um, it is suggested that um, you soak the cashews in some water um, maybe about four hours prior to you actually making the mac and cheese. Um, that's just to get the cashews nice and soft to where they're easy to blend. It's just an option. You don't have to, but it is recommended. So that's what I did. So once I added the um, cashews to the potatoes, um, I just cooked it down. Um, I did. I didn't let it boil. I uh, let it simmer, and I just let it cook until the potatoes got nice and tender. So that probably took about mm, five to ten minutes. All right, so now we are about to get down to the base of our mac and cheese, which is the cheesy sauce. So you just wanna blend those potatoes and those cashews up together. And here I'm just adding some vinegar. Um, the recipe actually called for apple cider vinegar, but I just had white vinegar. So um, I think it's okay to use either one. And then I just added the nutritional yeast. Um, once I added that, then I just went ahead and began the blending process. So the goal here is to get uh, your sauce to be a nice creamy consistency. So that's what you are looking for. So you just blend until you get that nice creamy consistency, however long it may take, depending on your blender.
So after a few minutes of blending, this is the consistency that I got. The cheese sauce came out nice and creamy as you can see. All right, so as y'all can see, the mac and cheese is still good and hot. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add the cheese mix to the pasta. Now what y'all about to see next is actually um, kind of me tweaking the recipe, I guess if you will. Um, because in my normal mac and cheese recipe, I would blend all of my cheeses together in the bowl. And then I would add, you know, my salt and pepper, butter, and other things like that. But since, of course, this is vegan, I'm going to add the vegan butter, the black pepper, and the salt. And then I'm going to add the vegan cheese to this mix. Honestly, um, if you wanted to, you can stop right there and serve it um, the way that it is in the bowl. Uh, but, you know, I had to take it a step further and do it like a baked mac and cheese. So, like I said, that's why you see me adding um, this cheese in the bowl. And then I'm going to add it into a pan and we're going to pop it in the oven for some baked mac and cheese. I also did this pot of green beans. Pretty simple recipe. I just added some onions and sauteed them with some minced garlic. Um, and in the water, what I did was added a half of tablespoon of the better than bouillon, better than bouillon uh, the vegetable flavor, and I let it boil. So y'all, these are my finished results. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create my first vegan meal. My uncle did let me know that everything tasted great. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys um, did any of the recipes. Um, and make sure you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It's free. It don't cost you nothing. Subscribe and turn on your notification bell. You'll be notified every single time I post a video. I'll check you out on the next one. Bye.